well, it's only, I think, 50% done, but yeah, that'll do. Um, right, so, oh, we will carry out with the Shahak, and I probably will take out the Kurnas at some stage today, hopefully, hopefully, I'd say about 2 o'clock, I'll probably try and take maybe the Kurnas 2000 or Kurnas out, depending. Um, it's just I'm trying to get uh, obviously silver lions for both finishing off the Israeli tree and <coughs> excuse me for the British side of the tech tree as well because I want to get the Tornado F3 unlocked as well as the Phantom FG1 I can't do it with <laughs> only a couple of thousand silver lions uh, welcome um, and to ask, answer your question I am <laughs> I'm 30 unfortunately or, yeah, I suppose it's a good thing, I suppose I'm 30, <laughs> hopefully. But yeah, um, slight problems obviously, you're already thinking why take the Shahak, why take the Mirage, but for me, this BR bracket of 10.0 is quite consistent. I mean, to be fair, I think it's probably the first time in a while I've seen you in stream. I think. Probably the first time in about maybe two weeks, three weeks, give or take. But yeah, I've um, chosen the Shahak just because it's uh, the BR rating that it is. It sits at 10.0, right? It doesn't have countermeasures. Um, however, it does obviously come with a Marcher R 350 radar missile and two A9Ds. Um, I've also got a talisman on it as well, which does help with the silver lion increase. So, it's quite a nimble aircraft, particularly what I find anyway, like you can dodge, unlike the last match, you can dodge um, head-on head -on heat-seeking missiles. <coughs> Excuse me, like the AIM, AIM-9L and whatever the Russian version of them. can't remember what it is, I believe, is it the R-60? And it might be the radar version, I'm not too sure. But hopefully we get other maps other than just... Is it Southern City? Yeah, so, uh, South Eastern City. We get a bit more variety, but no, Gaijin, we're going to be stuck with the same map for a short while. So I do... Oh. The only trouble is with obviously the Israeli Kurnas is um, that's going to lose lock, I think. Yeah, that's lost lock. I don't know why I did that. Oh shit. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, Israelis had two silent phantoms of the F4E. Got it. Uh, the FRE and the um, Kona 2000, which is essentially a more modernised version of the F4. That's terrible. Up to near speed. It's locking me. It's not going to catch me. I have A9Gs on me. Ooh, that was an unintentional dodge, but totally playing that, totally playing that. Damn it. It's worth a shot. Because usually you can dodge um, head on heat seeking missiles by either diving straight down. Um, straight down or straight up. Unfortunately, that <laughs> didn't have a lot of luck. <coughs> no, I'm doing well. Um, obviously, I'm, not, I'm off today, so I'm not actually going to be in work today. So I've got the day off. Then I'll be back to work Monday and Tuesday, and then off Wednesday, Thursday, and then back in the rest of the week. So obviously, today the stream's on. The stream is on rather early. So you know. It's a bit more beneficial for everybody that has the obviously time off school, work, etc., and that sort of thing. But I do try and stream 
you know, for slightly longer periods when I'm um, when I'm off. Just try and make up for the short streams that I have, you know, that I can try and get in between uh, between the days that I'm obviously working. And I don't know, there might not be a stream tomorrow afternoon, or Tuesday, or it might be Tuesday afternoon. It's kind of depending what my plans are. Um, Depends what happens throughout the day. Uh, whoa, dodge these guys! <laughs> the only problem with like all letting us take off at the same time. Um, yeah, so depending on what happens tomorrow. Um, Speaking of which, I actually need to message my friend. Just remind me. Um, rest just remind me what I'm, I'm going to try and sort out arrangements for not tomorrow but Tuesday. yeah to the plan so yeah pretty much can't complain other than that just obviously try and grind some more war thunder out after spending quite a while on a break from it so i think after a little while i do find um you, know, you do find that um obviously playing the same thing over and over again it does feel quite repetitive um, but i do plan you know the games continue streaming every day as much as I can hopefully if all goes to plan <laughs> we uh, finish or should I say re-complete top tier for the British air tree and then I don't know after that I did say obviously I'd go to the ground to the ground forces didn't I so I would do the Israeli ground tree so might do ground uh, might do um, the Israeli ground might do uh, I'm more likely going to do the arcade ground for tank uh, for tanks just because you kind of get obviously it's I mean a friend of mine said arcades more harder in um, ground forces but I don't know I, I quite like it in ground forces in arcade I don't know why I think I started off in arcade to begin with to get used to the controls and then after that I just basically stuck to it it was a bit more different with um, air battles but because oh, I spent a lot of time in arcade and I don't know what made me change to realistic I'm not too sure I think it was because I was trying to grind out you know to the, well, at the time the F-86 and then the Hulk Hunter the British so I sort of hopped onto realistic and started grinding out that way but now I've done that Wait, he's made it <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, I'm not going to go disappearing now in the next five minutes. I'm going to be here for a while. So you're in, you're in luck, you made it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear. Yeah, then. Let's hopefully, this isn't a bad omen that you turned up and I get shot out of the sky. I at least want to get one kill. But, um, I mean, I've, I've got to be honest, since coming back, I've got to say... The, the way guys would have implemented this new mechanic of severe damage so oh, you um, so the new damage mechanic is I mean me personally I actually quite like the new damage I don't think I've really heard anyone say anything bad against the new mechanic um, essentially all it is is I'll see if I can try and you'll probably notice it very very close yep so this is the example if you keep your speed up with a mirage you can dodge missiles Whoa. so essentially what it boils down to is if you severely damage aircraft is to essentially try and stop um, come on mate, there you are oh, nearly it's to try and stop uh, kill stealing basically I think Behind, isn't there? 
Um, hang on. Okay, that really does not help. <laughs> that was so annoying. I did all that work. Um, right. I need a victim. Um, I did all that work just to get that. So essentially, it's to stop that. So if you damage an aircraft, so for example, you get your tail shot. Um, you know, my tail rather disappears. I've got no tail at all. Um, I'll be classified as severely damaged. So I'm still in control of the aircraft. However, you know. I'm Okay, that that was not my best. <laughs> Fuck's sake! Right, um, right. Okay, <laughs> we'll try this again. So, right. So, um, essentially, it will go in the stages of. So, what will happen is you have hit critical hit and then um, severe damage so if you for example shoot a wing off an aircraft so you shoot like the, like the whole wing section off but the aircraft is still virtually controllable and he could still land and repair um, it basically means if anyone is to attack him as well so for example if you shot an enemy and you took the wing off and he's going into the ground but then someone comes after him and then yeah gets another crit and he hits the ground it'll classify as his kill because he's got the last crit on the vehicle for them to get the kill does that make sense so with a severe damage model when you get severely damaged um if someone was to get um you know, either destroy, uh, destroy, or you know, inverted commas, critical here. Um, the aircraft again, um, they wouldn't be credited for the kill as much as what you would. So, if you get the severe damage, you'll be credited with uh, the aircraft destroyed. They will get so um, they'll get aircraft counted as kill. So it will essentially be like an assist, but it'll be more of an assist. Does that make sense? So it's almost like half a kill, so they get like half a kill um, alongside their kill aircraft destroyed. So, um, excuse me, I noticed it before when I finished a, uh, finished a match. Um, so when you finish a match, if you get a kill and then an aircraft counted as a kill, you'll get, um, when it comes up aircraft destroyed, it will have like, obviously like the number that you've killed. And then next to it, it will have like a little star or like a little asterisk, and it will have like a number next to that. And that's the extra aircraft that you've killed, so it's got the half kills that you've got on top of that. But from what I've seen, or what I'm assuming, I think you do get like half the payout. So, for example, if you get 50, uh, 500 silver lines, 100 silver lines, sorry, for getting an aircraft destroyed, if you get an aircraft counted as a kill, so like the half kill, I think it goes, you know, it's. 50s you still get like a a little payout for getting the kill because it also stops people from because I've had it before where I've engaged someone taken them out um, or I've critted them sorry disappeared I've gone back to base uh, yeah so yeah you do I mean my missiles actually do that all the time anyway um, Um, I don't think he has countermeasures. That was an early mid-21 as well. That's Su-7, so I don't think he has countermeasures. Come on, turn, son of a bitch. So there you go, severe damage. So I've got um, silver lines and some research points. Um, so we'll see if someone kills him, if not, oh no, I've got a kill. And now I've got a mid-2919 on me, sorry. Right. Let's see, I'll get an actual kill this time. There we go. Now he should be able to dodge that. Or not, keeps flying straight and level. Got him. 
Right. So by looks of things, you actually do get. If you get severe damage, it does look like you actually get the kill already. Yeah, gone. 225. Now he's got severe damage on me. Welcome back. You know, I don't know where you disappeared to. Um, let's see if someone kills me. Oh, no, I'm trying to get my radar and missile locked. Oh, no, I'm going down. Let's do it. Right, so I've done it. Right, so he's hit me. There we go. Right. So, I don't go. I don't know if it will show up. It might show up in the stats. Let's have a look. Ooh, the Gripen. Uh, it doesn't actually show it on here, annoyingly. Well, our team got slaughtered. Right, anyway. Um, yeah, so you do get... Uh, oh, there we go. So, yeah, so you do get a... You do get extra. And um, you do get an extra payout. So, essentially think of it as um, an extra kill, um, an extra kill marker. So ideally, you know, you. but the thing is, I think, but, uh, where was I going with that? So, the thing is, I think, what I think, I think a lot of people they find confusing is, you know, if you was to crit an aircraft, you still get the kill if they crash, but if you severely damage an aircraft, that's a guaranteed kill. So, think of it as you get a crit, because you know, before you would get a critical hit on someone, and then you'd fly away and think, yeah, that's it, that's gone. And then you'd have someone fly in after them and kill them and shoot them out of the sky. And you think, oh, well, that's just, you know, I've just done all that work for nothing. So, in a way, it does sort of benefit you a bit and cover you. And by the way, that Jaguar, uh, Jaguar IS, um, the event vehicle, I do have in the tech tree now in the British tech tree with the Matra, uh, the Magic, so the Magic, Magic Twos. So I'm I'm tempted to take it out because it does seem like I could get in games with obviously. I don't know how it's going to play. I've played. I think I've gone up against it in the Chahak before. Um, so I may give it a go. I may not. I'm sort of, sort of flip flopping between choosing whether or not I take it out or not. I don't think I will. It might just be one of them aircraft that sits in my hangar and just collects dust all day. But um, we'll see. Because I still want to. I still plan to <laughs> spade. Um, spade the Israeli, spade the last two, sorry, Israeli tech trees, Israeli tech trees, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I meant spade the last two uh, modern jets that the Israelis had in their tech tree. Because I know, I know, I did say I would, so I do plan to do, you know, keep it and do it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, one thing I sort of like a suggestion I have is um, I tend to try and change my servers and I usually get better VR bracketed games. I, that sounds really stupid, but I find the more busier a server is, the less likely you are on um, getting a decent VR spread. So the anti-cheat keeps breaking it. Um, I hope you're not cheating. That might be why. <laughs> but welcome. Um, yeah, we literally just discussing obviously new mechanics and things in in War Thunder, along with different ways on kind of getting the BR spread to kind of work in your favour. <laughs> no, that's fine. To be fair, I'll be honest with you, I I think it's probably about a week or so ago I thought I was actually hacked myself. 
just because I couldn't log into the servers. But no, it just turns out the hamster's just had a stroke and died. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, have you sent like a, um, what they called, like a, I want to say form, it's not a form, is it? So that's just showing you my age, that is. I send paperwork out as opposed to sending it electronically. Um, yeah, have you sent, oh, I can't remember what the bloody thing's called now. Jesus Christ. What is it called? Um, application? No. Son of a bitch. Uh, how long ago was it? Because obviously they would they would get quite a lot of um, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. What is wrong with me today? I can't English, I'm sorry. So word of advice, just remember, if you get very close with a um, aircraft and you launch a heat-seeking missile, there's no matter how many players you use, that missile is going straight up the tailpipe. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, obviously they do, if you've got to bear in mind, they're going to get thousands, I want to say thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of uh, emails and um, issues of complaints about issues and things, and hopefully it does get resolved. Um, because God forbid that is an absolute, it is an absolute pain when that happens. Um, but I will say, just make sure that you haven't been hacked as well, just to play it safe. Because um, if you're struggling to get in because of the anti-cheat, chances are. So this is where that guy is actually really, really false because you can't actually kill still anymore. So I'm joking on him. I don't know why I'm doing this, I've got such a low airspeed. Why am I doing this? Mm. Mm. I would suggest, just, just out of safety precaution, just change your password, just to play it safe. Because last thing you'd want to do is assume it's one thing and then it's another, just to play it ultra safe. I mean, that's what I would do if I was in your position anyway. I mean, I have done exactly the same thing in your position to the lie. I've actually sat down to change my passwords just to play it incredibly safe. Because the last thing I wanted to do was get. Um, it's feel like if I've been hacked, I'll give them. I oh, haven't got access. Can you not even log in? So you should be able to log in onto Gaijin's website using your War Thunder details. Oh dear. Because I feel like that might be... Yeah, believe me, there's only... There's so many passwords you could do, but there's... You still... People will always find a way. Because quite a while back, and I'm talking of... No, you don't. Not getting me. Um, sorry, yeah. So, what was I saying? Um, so, Jesus Christ, this A10's got an erection for me, hasn't he? See ya. Uh, what was I? Um, yeah, so, I'm going to go back quite a number of years now. So, um, issue I had, so I wanted to buy something off of, um, it was eBay or something, I can't remember what I was buying. Oh, nuts. So, I can't remember what it was now. It was something, I think it was like a t-shirt or a hoodie or something I was going to buy online. And the company didn't op, uh, didn't use electronic bank transfers or cash. They only wanted um, PayPal. So, I knew I'd never had a PayPal um, account in my life. I kept getting 
PayPal email sent to obviously my email address. So I deleted it off, thought nothing of it, and then obviously went through the process of um, setting up a PayPal account. And I kept saying email account is already in use. Well, that's strange. So kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. And then I sent off a um, email to a PayPal saying like, look, I can't log in or anything to PayPal. I want to set up an account and it's just not working. So they sent to me uh, sent me another email back and said um, we looked into the issue for you, um, but we need to phone call you. Or we need to give you a phone call. So they rang me. So I'm talking over the phone with these people, and they said, right. So and I said, they said, they said something along the lines of um, what seems to be the problem. So that this is the problem. I can't log in. I can't uh, create a PayPal account. Like what's going on? And I did some research and digging and said, right, okay, um, after I've been on, bear in mind, I've been on hold for about 10, 15 minutes at this point. Uh, the bloke over the phone says to me, right, I need to transfer you to another section of our customer services. I said, I've got to speak to um, security. I'm like, okay, fair enough, just to prove who I was. So, get put on hold, another person comes on the phone, he says to me, um, Right, so you're through to the forward side of PayPal, he says. Um, how can I help you? He said, well, I keep being put from pillar to post. Like, what's going on? And then he did some research, and it turns out, uh, years and years and years ago, there was a massive scamming thing over in China, and they took thousands and thousands of emails to create fake PayPal accounts for themselves to buy stuff from. And it turns out that one person that he had set up an account was with my email address. The kicker was, the bloke was using, bearing in mind my email address was actually my name um, and the year, the how old I was when I uh, made the email account. The guy in China called, uh, I think it was like Wang Li or something like that, was using my email address which was a British name, A16, and they even looked at it and went, oh yes, that's fine, that's a complete uh, fraud, that was a fraud done years ago, don't worry, we'll delete it and you can make a new account. And honestly, it's just, there's certain things that you think, oh, what, my email address, this is safe, that's safe. When you get amongst the internet, out in the internet somewhere, honestly, it's just ridiculous how fragile and how um, vulnerable all of your details are. That's why I don't tell a lot of um, you know my personal information. I won't ever share it over the internet. Because it just takes one person to say it and record it and whatnot and you know it'll be used in I dread to think what it'd be used in but yeah anyone and everyone could use it. Got him. I'm not worried about him now. Let's go about someone else. Oh, there we go. Thought I was an enemy then. <laughs> That's close. Did he, did he? Also, though, I do plan to keep using Discord, so I will try and... I mean, I am trying to get it fixed, to be fair. I'm, I'll, I do want... Um, actually, on, on that, on a slightly more positive note with Discord, I do want to get... Um, I'm trying to get, you know, the announcement side of things, so, like... If ever I go onto Discord, or if ever I go live, I want my Discord to automatically uh, broadcast when I'm live. You know, I just can't get it to work at the moment. Right, he's dropping a load of flares. Maybe like B. Wow. Are you for real?
I honestly think that is going to go on someone's poxy TikTok reel. I'll be very surprised if that doesn't come up at some point and be getting absolutely demolished. <sighs> yeah, so that was a MiG-21 tunnel visioned on that Su-25. Just so I was taking that deflection shot and he flew straight into me. So, yeah. So they got rid of, um, what's it? Uh, kill stealing. I can't steal a kill if they're killing me, can they? Dear, oh dear. I can't really say Madden because I've done similar stuff to that, but I mean, if you're tunnel vision like that, you need to just seriously get help. I know we've all been tunnel vision before. Jeez. Oh well. It happens. And the worst thing that I've ever done I've done it several times actually I've launched I think the worst thing that ever happened to me once was I was radaring an enemy jet I think it was in the Phantom I can't remember if it was the FGR2 or it was the uh, Kernas 2000 no it wasn't the Kernas 2000 it would have been the, the standard Kernas um, I was locked onto an enemy jet in front of me and as I fired the missile, it was tracking to the target. And just as it was tracking to the target, someone uh, friendly flew across my flight path. And because obviously he flew into the radar beam, the radar picked him up and locked onto him. So the missile changed course, flew for him and killed him. Even though I'd, I, I, I could see, I, as soon as I see it happen, I turned the radar off, hoping the missile wouldn't keep tracking, it'd just detonate. But unfortunately, I didn't do it quick enough, and it tracked to him and killed him. I just think, like, whoops, oh, that was a genuine accident. But you obviously, obviously, I always try to um, with radar missiles. I try to only ever aim for aircraft, any aircraft that are, um, you know, they're with they're out of range of friendly friendly contacts because the last thing I want. Um, is my missile to go for them? You know, Heat-seeking missiles are a lot more easier to um, to aim and to shoot, whereas obviously the radar ones are a lot more finicky. I have an F one hundred and four. That's not the Turkish one, so he has no countermeasures. Oh, but he's dodged it though. Oh, someone else has got him. That's fine. There's one spaceship dealt with. Not that uh, him. That's him down. Don't think he's just dropping flares for the sake of dropping them. I'm not going to lob a missile at him. But I might. Sod it. Maybe that's going to do that. Right. Come on, turn you son of a bitch. That, that was worth it. If he crashes, that is totally worth it. <laughs> I hope he crashes now, because that would be so worth it if he does. Damn. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Never mind. Uh, do I see many tourists? Um, I mean... Oh, cruise like the fuck. Um, in what way? Because if you mean like day to day, 
then no, I'm not going to see, I won't see um, tourists. Um, give me two minutes, I'll be right back. While I'm on still crew lock, I'll be two minutes. And I'll try and answer your question a bit more clearer. Right, and I'm back. Sorry about the delay. Oh. oh, I can't believe it's still not ready yet. So, do you mean like if I'm, I mean to be honest I don't really see, because, so where I live, um, I don't actually see tourists, because the parts of, well, the part of the UK that I live is not really like a tourist hotspot, so people tend to go. I mean, you might see um, European drivers with caravans and things driving up and down the motorways, but you know, I don't see them personally. You know, they tend to stay. You know, they tend to go towards the more um, the more places that you know are more popular with a tourist, which would be you know London, Stonehenge. Um, oh god, I can't believe it. I can't believe what it's called. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, for me, I don't really see tourists at all, really. Um, only if I go up to London, then obviously I would see tourists everywhere. Same with Canterbury, if you go to Canterbury, um, you will see uh, tourists and whatnot around because um, that's quite a historical place or a histor historical significance sorry so it, it kind of depends it's sort of like in America and I suppose in Canada as well because so obviously in America you've got certain areas that people want to see you know when they go on holiday so like 
the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, the Space Needle in Seattle, the Grand Canyon, um, New York City to see, um, uh, uh, God, the One Trade Center, that was the One World Trade Center where Ground Zero was, um, and what have you, so, you know, it's sort of the same thing, really. I mean, where I live and go to and pray work all the time, I, I don't actually see, or sick of the time of day that I, or sick of the time frame that I leave for work, I don't see anyone. You know, the only people that are up going, you know, are up and on the roads, like me, are either night workers that are just coming home from working all night, or people that are going to work like me that start at 6 o'clock in the morning. I might see lorry drivers going to and fro up and down the roads you know that have come from either come from Spain and Europe that are travelling to other warehouses and things or you know the mail you know whatever you are I don't actually see a lot of tourists so no I don't think now I think about it I don't think I do anyway I mean going home to a different kettle of fish so I'm leaving at 2 o'clock in the afternoon so you know I might see um, you know, other not other other license plates on the road as opposed to just the British number plate. So I could assume they were tourists. They might not be, but more often than not, they are. I hope that helps answer your question. I hope. Too far out. So that uh, radar logs way too far. That's the radar signature. Oops. I better be careful here. So, I'm hoping that no one's gone for that uh, F4 yet. So I'm going to log one of the F4. So I'm going to log one at the 88. Bam, bam. Double strike. We're back in business, people. We are back in business. Showing what the Mirage is made out of. I'm on lock, so. Nah, it's not gonna lock, it's too. Oops. I'll let him go down. I'm not gonna stay there. Pick speed back up, I at least want to be, at least, so what happened there? I at least want to be in Mach 1 to try and uh, at least launch that Martra. I find the F100's getting bullied. Ooh. That's just bullying, that is. They're saying that did exactly the same thing before. Right, see if we can get a radar lock on someone. Tends after me. No, he's not. Doesn't even see me. He's down. What's that? What happened? I missed it. Okay, I'm going to catch him. F104. Yeah. I don't know what you mean, I didn't see nothing. Genuinely didn't see nothing. I mean, to be fair, I answered the question, so... Or unless you posted something and deleted it, but it didn't come up. That's the case. Right, is he going straight for his... Yes, he is. And I am not going to be that stupid. 
be one better. Loop around the mountain, hopefully catch him unawares. Okay, there he is, he hasn't actually landed, so I should. He's either going to turn left or he's going to turn right. I'm hoping he's just carried straight. Yep, there he is. Son of a bitch. Thank you. Oh, you son of a gun. Not yet, no. Gotcha! <laughs> yes! I just need to crash. Please crash. Oh, there you go. So I've got a plus one. Yes! There we go. Right. <laughs> Sorry, that was just way too... Um... <laughs> I'm really happy with that. Um, so, yeah. So that's an example. Of, um, so, when you do finish a match, you do get a severe damage, but are credited as a kill. It'll come up as a plus one like that. That was so close. I was so close. <laughs> I mean, I just can't get... I was just so gutted that if that radar missile had hit, I could have just egressed and not worried about the um, Rolands, but... Oh, dear. Oh well, that was a success. I mean, to be fair, if he'd... So he did do the right thing by just luring me over to the airfield, because I do exactly the same thing, but... Um, he shouldn't have attempted to land. He shouldn't have attempted. He should have just carried on. If he'd accelerated, because obviously he's got better acceleration than me, so obviously I'm, I'm basically crashing. So if he just pulled the burner on and just accelerated past, he would have been fine, but unfortunately, he chose wrong. Never mind. That's nice four kills in that match. Uh, let's see if we can go for five this one, shall we? We've got a different map other than Southern City, or South Eastern City, sorry. So, let's see how this ends. No, uh, what's the BR? It's the BR spread. Not bad. There's F100 in here, so we might have quite a few F100s maybe. A lot of C25s, so we're bound to see A10s. So, we're to see A10s, early MiG 21s that don't have countermeasures. F-104s that don't have countermeasures F-100s that don't have countermeasures don't have to, We might have F-8s, if you have F-8s that's going to be a slight problem but I don't see any of the enemy team, they're usually up high anyway This might be one of them No, it's a lightning That'll do Come on Martra, straight, straight and true Yes, gotcha He's going down. So I've taken his tail off and it's a crit. But it's not as severely damaged. And now I've got an F4C locking me up. 
Ooh. Yeah, it's my own fault. That was me just glorying it. Uh, staring at that falling <laughs> lightning. I mean, I could, if I wanted, take out the uh, F4C and the American Tech Tree. Um, I might actually do that, to be fair. And we change to the F4C. Uh, change the weaponry. I want. Uh, does it come with dogfight? They are. Uh, no, it's aim seven Ds only. Okay. Tempted. Don't get me wrong. I am tempted. Do one more mission. We'll do one more game in the Shahak. I mean, how long have I been streaming for right now? Bloody hell, we stream for an hour already. <laughs> oh my god. Right, so we'll do one mission in the Shahak, one more, depending on how this game goes, and then I'll hop over to the F4C in the American Tech Tree. And then we'll start flying out with the F4. And then we can see how we get on that way. So we've got Jaguars, uh, Lightnings, so this is, <laughs> that it does, time flies me having fun. Um, it's kind of why I like the Mirage to be fair, because I just, I don't know what it is about this airframe, but I just seem to do very well in it. Compared to any other aircraft I've ever flown in War Thunder, this is the one aircraft that I seem to always consistently have quite good games in. Um, so yeah, I'll probably throw this out for this match, hopefully get a kill, at least. And then what we'll do, I'll load up the F4C in the American side tech tree, and we'll start using that. Hopefully, we don't hemorrhage silver lines. The only thing I'm scared of is I don't want to start hemorrhaging the games we've just got for the past hour. Because it's the same. I mean, the whole reason why I would like I'm um, tempted to be a four seats because it's it's the same VR bracket as the Shahak. So we're going to get exactly the same aircraft that we're facing now. So you obviously have Lightnings, F8, uh, AV8, Harrier, American Harriers, F3H Demon. I think they are, aren't they? The de uh, known as the Demon. Um, obviously, British Harriers, uh, Swedish Drakens. Uh, F8U, so the Corsairs, F104, Thunder, uh, so Thunder Chiefs, bloody hell. They're not Thunder Chiefs, are they? Definitely not Thunder Chiefs. <laughs> well, they will see Thunder Chiefs, I think, because they're, um, I think they're temperate now as well. I believe. Oh, you son of a bitch. I hate when people do that. I bet I've done that a handful of, handful of times. Now for that meter on three, and he's got flares, so I don't know why I did that for. Oh no! Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> right, in that case. In that case. Right, in that case, we are now going for a bit of a change of pace. And now going for my other favourite aircraft, the F4 Phantom aircraft, and I am going to. Um, what do I do with the state? Oh, right. Let me try and. <laughs> I don't really want 
Oops. Yes. Right. For that paint scheme, thank you very much. So, I mean, the American tech tree I'm actually grinding out, or I was grinding, um, the F14 Tomcat. Um, and then obviously with the Israeli tree, I just want to grind that, I wanted to grind that, finish that, because I could obviously get to top tier a lot more quicker. Um, and I really wanted the Mirage 3. Right, so, dog in missiles on. 20 minutes of fuel. Right, we are good to go. <clears throat> oh, actually, no, I could also use the F8U Corsair as well, actually, but that's not spaded. Whereas that's spaded, so I won't actually lose any um, silver lines when I obviously. Um, that's the name. Up we go. Uh, radar. No, it doesn't have post dot part. We must remember that. But I do want to increase uh, the scope. No, uh, that's the one. This is quite a decent spread. Yeah, I mean, to, although to be fair, saying that, I mean, you say that with the MiG-23, uh, MiG I've had I've had exactly the same thing, but I've been using uh, the FGR2 Sky Flashes. And I've had Sky Flashes do exactly the same thing. Um, I mean, it does happen. Sometimes you're on the receiving end. Sometimes it's the enemy you're shooting at is on the receiving end. But, um, yeah, I would... I would definitely say um, you know just try and try and be a bit patient I mean a lot of the times I mean usually I find if your if your aircraft has counts measures obviously my Phantom does not um, but if you have uh, an aircraft that does and it's a heat seeking missile if you dump counts measures and turn tightly but don't use your afterburner you can usually uh, dodge them but a lot of the time it's all down to um, situational awareness and always being aware of when you're when you're or when your enemy behind you is more likely to launch a missile um, now right now I could launch a sparrow but I know it's not going to track properly because it's I'm underneath um, the speed threshold of what I should be in, launching the missile at. Because if I get, there we go, so I'm in mock speed now, so I'm obviously faster than sound, and I know that if I lob a missile now, I've got a good chance of hitting it, but I don't know what it is. And that is just lost a weak radar lock, so it might not actually track, or it might do. I've got a MiG-21 on me. Some MiG-19 coming up behind me. Let's hurry up. That's severe damage. That's good enough. Whoa, that's dodged me. I could hear it coming behind me. That's coming right behind me. I mean, to be fair, I would take that. <laughs> I would take that. I would take that successful. I'll take that as a test. I'll, can I count them two extra kills or not? <laughs> oh dear.
Yeah, I don't think Gaijin would see it that way, would they? They see me with um, getting those two kills just then, unintentionally. <laughs> oh dear. See, every time someone says, oh, good luck, people, I'm like, yeah, that, that doesn't ever bode well for me. I always get killed every single time. Oh, I do have a slight tip, actually, why I think of it. Oh, it's actually quite a good BR bracket with F111s. Mm, it's not bad. Could be better. So, if you have an aircraft and you want to get... Um, if you want to get uh, a talisman for a sp specific, I can't say this today. I mean, yeah, it's doable. Um, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah. So I need to kind of realise this with the um, Israeli tech tree because obviously it's got very few aircraft, but. Um, if you was to buy an aircraft and then assign a crew to that aircraft, you have a chance of getting talisman for it. So, um, when you're buying your way or grinding out a tech tree, you don't actually have to crew every vehicle in the tech tree. So, you're essentially saving yourself anywhere between 250 to upwards uh, 1,000 silver lions. But as well as that, you'll only ever get talismans for aircraft that you've got crew for. So if, like me, I did a stupid thing with both the British and the um, American tech trees, I crewed every single aircraft that I bought. So I essentially have a 1 in, what, 60 chance of getting the vehicle I want. Whereas if you was to crew, for example, 5 out of 2, uh, 5 out of... 30 in those five aircrafts the crews uh, those five aircraft that you've crewed are talismans that you want for obviously you've got a hundred percent chance of getting excuse me the talisman that you want he's dying I don't want him I want this one up here now I need to change the Oops, that'll do. Come on, track aim seven. That's not gonna track, that's way too quick. So it. Use that. Mirage will dare you. Oh, he dared. Very good. <laughs> I'm glad he dared. Um, yeah, I can see why that. I see why they're so good in that Mirage Three because they are very potent aircraft. Uh, let's have a look. We've got counter measures for that already. Oops. Let's have a look. I do. Honestly, the F-104, I think it's actually quite comfortable where it is, personally. Um, the reason I say that is, so, yeah, so the, the F-104, F-104 Starfighter, sorry. Um, it definitely sits at the comfortable BR that it's at. Because the only thing it has, you know, it's one of these glass cannons. It's, it's really, really good at being really, really fast. But it only ever has aim 9 b sidewinders, um, and it doesn't have countermeasures. I mean, that's the early stage. That's the of the F104A, the F104C. I believe it doesn't. Yeah, so it doesn't have countermeasures, and again, it only has aim 9 bs and they're very, very rubbish missiles. And you've got to bear in mind that's in the same BR bracket as a premium um, A10 Warthog or even the tech tree versions so it could face a10s with aim 9 l's it even face a6e intruders with uh, aim 9 l's 
I mean, it'll even face an F-104 Thunder Chief with A9Es. Um, you know, that doesn't come standard with countermeasures, but it does come with uh, uh, countermeasure pods. But obviously you've got to sacrifice um, the missiles for the pods. I mean, at the time, the F-104 was actually um, my go-to aircraft for grinding out the rest of the tech tree. Because you could have bombs, it had missiles, and it was very quick. And the BR that it was in, it could quite comfortably, you know, hold its own against everything else. Same with some of the other aircraft. I mean, the only one that really is going to struggle, or the one that will, does struggle, is the F-100 Super Sabre. Because that sits at 9.3. And again, that's got the same issues that the Starfighter has. Except it does come with AIM-9Es. But... You know, it's, it's not good in terms of performance. You know, it does struggle. Um, what else do we have at this BR? Let's have a look. Um, and obviously you've got the F-8, which are very, very good. Uh, the F-8U2, sorry, is a very, very good aircraft. In that BR. And it comes with countermeasures. Um, I don't know how many it comes with. How many does it come with? That helps. Uh... Let's have a look. That doesn't tell me. No. Nope. Uh, oh, it's right there. What an idiot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where is it? Is that it? That should tell us how many countermeasures. Yes, it only comes with 60 countermeasures, so that's not a whole lot. But then again, you have to bear in mind that you're going up against, you know, phantoms, mirages other aircraft that don't actually have countermeasures so it's sort of you know performance wise the F-8 is actually a really good aircraft but the issues that you have is that you know it's all kind of swaying pros and cons um, I mean I for one I've not really had an issue with F-104s because I know that they're really good at flying in a straight line and climb rates but that's about it so I know you know if I was to flee I'm not going to be able to outrun them I know they're going to be able to chase me but I know as soon as they've launched both their missiles I know I'm, I'm sort of okay because I can obviously turn tight or I can turn better than what they can compared to obviously any F-104 because they're so um, well, it's like quite a good BR but that was quite a oh, very good BR um, so yeah it's sort of sort of how you face them really I mean Phantoms you know they can't turn very tightly they're, they're, their whole thing is power so you get them up to speed and they'll essentially stay at that speed you know they're very very good at maintaining well, they was in real life good at maintaining airspeed um, especially in turn they weren't good in turn fights but they were very good in like vertical engagement um, so it doesn't really translate well into war thunder but ideally you want to try and face things that are you know a bit more weaker than you uh, they change change to no Yeah, I do believe, so, I know there is one Sea Harrier that sits at a wide rock, um, I can't remember which Sea Harrier is, I think it's, is it the FRUS-3, or something like that, that sits, I mean to be fair, um, I will say any Harrier, I mean, the Harrier is the trouble is with the Harrier is you got to bear in mind like the Su-25 and the A-10 you're a subsonic aircraft going into you know your BR bracket is in a supersonic um, air bracket so instantly you're at a disadvantage yeah no it's the FR it's the, F, the one I'm thinking of is the one that's in it's in the premium sided tree, but it's like the squadron vehicle you can unlock. Um, 
is the I can't, that's going to bug me now but I'm pretty sure it's something like the FRS 2, 3 or something um, I mean all they, all of them have obviously you've got to bear in mind all of them are incre incredibly slow because the only thing they have obviously is their acceleration but that gets them to what 500 kilometers an hour or something 700 I oh, was speed of sound 700 isn't it so you know they're instantly at a disadvantage because any other aircraft can easily outspeed them whereas you know they're one of their saving graces they're actually smaller so they're very hard to hit um, they're quite a small target to hit especially with guns um, they don't actually come with countermeasures I do believe um, I don't think they do anyway I know the AV8 does come with countermeasures but oh god I didn't think that hit me because I completely missed um, sorry yeah so hang on. I'm going to have to go into I'm definitely going to have to take a break how long have I been playing hang on yeah, an hour and a half, that's good enough. An hour and a half's good. Um, right, so... I'll use this time to kind of display what I'm discussing. So... The Premium AV8... It does come with countermeasures. Oh, it does, it comes, it comes centre line. Right, okay. So, they come with countermeasures. So, the Premium does. Uh, what about... Oh. So does this tech tree version. Right, okay. Good to know. Right, so they do so the American ones do come with cat measures, but I remember the British ones don't. Um, let's have a look. Oops. Uh let's have a look. Yep, yeah, so the British ones do not come with countermeasures. Uh, they come with S RAMs, and that's it. And obviously those missiles are the same ones that are fitted, I believe, or similar onto, yeah they are, that are fitted onto the Hunter F6, which are essentially heat-seeking dogfight missiles. So they're short range, or very short range missiles that you have to lock on at like less than one kilometre in a tight turn, otherwise they're not going to track. So they're very situational. Um, Harrier GR3 is where you get the better missiles because you get AIM-9Gs which are obviously more beneficial aircraft but again um, ah no you do get countermeasures I lied so you do come with countermeasures um, so essentially the early stage one so the one that sits which one is it so yeah so if you're buying the premium version no countermeasures but if you get the GR obviously you grind the GR3 you do get countermeasures I don't think you get a lot of them though from what I remember sorry one sec I'm proper fat fingering this now let's have a look that won't tell me oh there we go so you only get 60 you don't actually get a lot of countermeasures um, obviously your um, one of your saving graces is, is your tight turning and your ability to hover because your um, thrust vectory, you can actually turn tighter than any other aircraft and a lot slower. Oh, there it is. It's the FRS-1. So it's the fleet air arm version of the Harrier. Which you get in the squad. And that comes with AIM-9Ls. And that is at 10.7. So that you're going to face um, early st or later stage Phantoms. Um... You might even face a tornado or two, plus the Jaguars. And obviously, there's the Jaguar, the Indian Jaguar, with the French Magic, is it French Magic 2s? But yeah, so, I mean, I've used the premium version when it first came out, just for, just for memes really, just for fun. Oh, I can start grinding that out already. Even though this one, I know th I know this one isn't the aircraft that we're going to be using. Yeah, that's the best thing to use because it was obviously used. That version was used in real life, so it comes with K 
countermeasure pods. As well as aim nine L's. So I'm just going to use this as a demonstration of the of, of, of the tornado. Um, so yeah, so Harriers are very, you know, they they can be used. Uh, how do I turn reverse thrust? There we go. So reverse thrust. So I'm just making sure I remember how to turn it on and off. So. Yeah, so I mean, each aircraft is kind of, kind of situation on its own, right? I mean, you can obviously any aircraft you can do well in. You know, I know a lot of people sort of think, oh, this is better, that's better, but you can. You, know, you can do very, very good in all all aircraft. It's just you kind of you obviously want to tailor. Your play style or tail the aircraft, the aircraft's ability. Sorry, to your um, play style and whatnot. So you might have an aircraft that you know you're very very good at boom and zoom, but it doesn't perform well at boom and zoom at all. So you sort of have to learn the different aspects of it all. So like the FGR three or the uh, the GR1, sorry, like the tornado we're using here. You know, it doesn't turn well at all. You can turn, but I know I can't do so good in a tight turn continuously. And it looks like it doesn't actually come with countermeasures anyway, so obviously already I'm at a disadvantage. Although it does, I've got to say, it does keep its airspeed up very well. And if you're ever like not sure of how an aircraft performs, just take it out for a test drive. And personally, I'm not too sure yet. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I actually got the so you, when uh, War Thunder had the um, had the event on for the Tornado uh, Marine, was it the Marine Flieger. So I don't speak German, so you can tell it's not my first language. But um, essentially, I found very, very quickly that the tornado is very, very quick. Obviously, um, doesn't turn very tight. So, I think personally, what you're going to want to do, um, let me show you. Hang on. What I'll do is. I go to the one that I've got because that's obviously a stock tornado. I'm not sure the one that's in the German tech tree is stock. No, it's still not stock. Well, it's still stock, sorry. But I do have some bits unlocked for it, as you can see. Um, so, realistically, I always took out uh, bombs. I always took out the chaff dispensers and obviously... Uh, aim at the uh, missiles. Um, I usually, or I used to, depending on what the match was, I would fly out at low level using the speed, um, drop the bombs over either bases or ground targets, and then move in to engage enemy targets that come for me. I don't kind of play, you don't play the tornado aggressively because everything that you're going up against, so use as an example if I go down to 11.0 in the Germans obviously you've got Su 22s and MiG 23s uh, you might even obviously your other tornadoes F4 Phantoms uh, where's the British go down to British obviously you've got other obviously again tornadoes how am I not researching that yet I thought I'd pick that yeah, that's the best thing to do. So I can start previewing these now. Nice. So what we'll do is... So I didn't even realise that, to be totally honest with you. I'm also going to test fly the fighter tornado. So, I mean, you've got to bear in mind, the only big difference between the bombing tornado... I mean, there's no actually difference between the two of them. Not that I know of. Oh, that... 
Okay. Okay, I've just noticed something. So the fighter version of the tornado already looks very sm it looks smaller let's have a look let's take it out because obviously I took out the the, uh, the bomber version the GR3 the GR1 sorry this is the GR3 so this is an, a later stage of model of the, of the tornado Oops. For some reason, just looking at it, it looks smaller. Like the whole fuselage profile looks smaller. But it definitely doesn't look as fat. It looks quite skinny. So it leads me to believe it might turn better. It rolls very, very well. Like the like the um like the GR1, the GR3 does again. It's a quite a good roll rate, and it is very, very responsive. Um, no worries. I'm just gonna try and blow this MiG-19 MiG out, and I'm gonna head off myself. But yeah, it does feel very, very responsive. It still doesn't turn very well. It does turn quite well at speed. What I'll do is I'll land now. So we want to see the reverse thrust, don't we? I don't know when the air brake or when the landing gear snap. Hang on, don't go anywhere just yet. There we go. Reverse thrust. Well, nice how the, work, the reverse thrust works like a chat, like a chat, doesn't it? And. we landed and we're now going backwards woohoo that's that's one way of landing it <laughs> hey there we go but yeah sorry where was I it does actually come with countermeasures as well so that is a big bonus so bear that in mind, the bomber tornado, no countermeasures um, as standard. Or it has it has um sorry let me rephrase that. Uh, the GR3 comes so this is the fighter version. That comes with uh, internal countermeasures. And then the bombing tornado doesn't come with internal countermeasures. So that is a big difference. But other than that. That's it. That's it for the stream. Uh, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Um, I am definitely not going to order the Phantom just yet. And I could actually. Oh, I know why. It's because I've done that event vehicle. <laughs> right, okay. So, I might. So, tomorrow. And in the week, if you pick up any stream in the week, guys, um, I will come back out with the FGR2 Phantom, maybe. And then we're going to just continue grinding and then get the Tornado F3, as promised. We start upgrade the crew, I think, maybe. Yeah. I'll grab the crew. Right. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. We are going to be back with the Phantom FGR2 tomorrow. And also within the week, um, tomorrow is going to be a stream, and then Tuesday probably not, just because I'm going to golf tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, sorry. I'm going to golf Tuesday, so I probably won't be on. But 
I might give like a short stream or a little update, even the community tab or whatnot. Um, obviously today we've had the Mirage and we also had the F4C. Um, and then after, the, and obviously next coming weeks or next coming days, we're going to be working on the F3 Tornado. And then once we've got that acquired, I think I'll probably do another poll and see who wins out of the GR1 Tornado, the South African Gripen, and the Jaguar GR1. And whoever wins, um, I will start grinding out that side of the tree next. Um, I because. I don't know why I'm, I'm I'm hoping that as and when the Eurofighter Typhoon comes it'll come out just after the F3 Tornado although I know what guys are going to like they're probably going to label it as a Grand Grand Strike aircraft and now my luck <laughs> obviously I haven't finished grinding out this tree yet so we'll, we'll, we'll finish the jet we'll finish the tornado get this done and then you can decide whether I do the Gripen, the GR1 Tornado, or the Jaguar. And if he's, if the Jaguar wins, then it means I've got to grind out these other three, these four aircraft, one after the other. And obviously, if Gripen wins, it's just Gripen. And then if it's just Tornado, obviously Tornado, etc. Then we'll go on from there. But aside from that, thanks for coming by, everybody, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.